All right, John Oaks here with Hanks' Hot Rods here in our Homer City location today. And today we're bringing you this 1969 Chevrolet Camaro here, SS style vehicle here. So again, we're going to go over it and uh, tell you exactly what we see, what we have here. And we'll do that the whole way around our vehicle today. So again, 69 Camaro SS style vehicle. So again, you see uh, most of the styling cues you would on the SS car. You see the SS hood here, that's all steel. The SS hockey stripe here down the side of the car in black. Of course, you see the exterior of the car yellow. Now this, I'm not sure how it looks through the camera, but I do want to make sure that I tell you this is not the butternut yellow. Uh, so again, it's not butternut yellow, so it's not that real pale. Um, so again, it's a more uh, more bright yellow than, than what the butternut is. Got the black stripes on it, of course, like I said. Black vinyl top on it as well to help set things off there too. Uh, in combination with uh, the SS hood, we've got the 350 emblems up here on the front fender. And we've got the Camaro script as well as the SS emblems here on the back side of the front fenders. Um, you have the bright wheel lip moldings too the whole way around the car, all four corners. Uh, and then you also have these factory SS style wheels. These are those Magnum 500 wheels. And again, just like they would have been from the factory, these are the 14 inch wheel, uh, along with the beauty rings and the correct SS center caps on those as well. As far as rubber on the tire, or on the wheels go here, uh, we've got all BF Goodrich Radial TA tires. So again, all the treads good on these, all matching tread pattern the whole way around. And on this car, all four tires are the same size. 225-60R14s is what's on this for tires the whole way around. As we walk back here a little ways, we can take a look down below. We see that we have the uh, bright, uh, it would be like your uh, rocker molding there, the rocker panel molding along the bottom there. It's nice and straight, polished up really nice, so that looks good. We can look at our door gaps here too, front gap as well as the gap along the back side of the fender here. We can see those are pretty uniform, so again, the door front to back has been adjusted fairly well. We've got the mirrors here, just uh, basically on the driver's side, I see it's got the uh, bow tie emblem on it. The actual chrome finish on it looks really good too. There's no pits or anything like that in the finish of that mirror. Bright, or not bright, but we have our drip rail moldings here. They have been painted the same color as the rest of the car. And then the other thing I like to do is feel up along the side here and look down through that rain gutter there to make sure it's nice and smooth the whole way around and it is as I feel down through there. So that's all in good shape there too. As I said, the black vinyl top, it looks great. All of our trim that goes around that vinyl top, it's all in really good shape. Nice and straight, polished up really nice. And again, that goes the whole ways around the car clear to the other side. Now, as we're back here, we're gonna go ahead and open up our door. Just take a quick peek on the inside here. You can see that our exterior color, that yellow, it continues on uh, into the interior of the car here. We've got the rubber bump stops, top and bottom. The little GM decal right here on the door as they would have had from the factory. Now all of our interior, all black vinyl interior. We've got the houndstooth seat covers in here, front buckets, the rear bench in the back with the matching houndstooth covers on it also. So again, we've got all black interior. Door panels look great. The dash again looks great. Those are things we're going to take a look a little closer here in just a little bit when we go inside. Our weather stripping and seals that go the whole way around the door, those are in great shape. The seals along the top here where your window comes up in contact with, those are in great shape too. There's no cracks, no tears, no chunks taken out of it. So again, that's all really nice, nice and soft there too. So whenever you roll the window up and close the door, it's going to seal up really good. Threshold plates look great. The door jam U seals, those look great too. So we're going to close our door. You can see the door shuts nice and easy too. So again, you can tell that that door has been adjusted very nicely. Quarter panel, you've got the accents down here. Uh, those little fish gills or whatever you want to call them down there. Those look good. They're nicely polished up and nice and straight. Again, the bright wheel up moldings, those Magnum 500 wheels. 
the side marker light bezels here. Those look great too. And the lenses in those, those are in good shape as well. No cracks or chips in those either. Um, the other thing is we always like to look down the side of the car and just check elevations to make sure your quarter to door and door to fender elevations are all matching as they go down the side of the car. And this car they are. As you look down the side they line up really nice the whole way down the side. I don't see any deviations in that door elevation uh, from quarter to the fender whatsoever. So it's all in line with one another. All right, now that we're around the back side of the car here, we're gonna take a look. Uh, we can, you know, continue looking at the vinyl top here. And I can tell you as I feel around the vinyl top, down the sides, around the bottom edge here of the vinyl top here, everything is very smooth. So again, you can tell that this wasn't put on just to cover something up. Uh, you can feel those issues on a car whenever they do that. And this car is nice and smooth the whole way around. The rear glass, it's tinted window here. Um, again, it's in good shape. I don't see any cracks or any chips in it. Uh, and our trim work around it. You can see it fits real nice, polished up good, and it's nice and straight. No dents or dings in that rear trim. Uh, so as we come around the back now, we'll look at our trunk. First thing is the elevations on the trunk. So as we feel our whole way around here, um, you can tell that the quarter panels and the trunk lid aren't bad at all as far as lined up elevation wise. Now these trunks, they do have some adjustability built into them. You can move the latch a little bit, even your little rubber bump stops that are in there, you can sometimes change those out, make it fit, you know, one way or the other, you know, whichever way you want to go. But our trunk lid isn't bad at all on this car. As far as the rear spoiler goes, you can see it fits real nice here on the trunk, painted the same color as the rest of the car, so it matches up real nice. Tail panel, again, same color as the car. You've got the SS emblems on the tail panel. As far as our tail lights go, the tail light lenses, those are in great shape on both sides. There's no cracks, no chips, nothing like that on those. Or they should be bright, they are, and everything else is in good shape on them. As far as our gaps, side to side, and across the back side of our trunk here, those are all very uniform the whole way around, so they all look good with uh, you know everything else there as far as being in alignment. Uh, we have the rear bumper here very nicely chrome uh, so really shined up well you can see yourself in it I don't see any uh, no scratches or anything like that the whole way around the bumper it looks good um, you've got the little bumperettes down here and of course your lower balance that's in great shape and it's lined up and looks good too. Uh, the other thing I always like to point out is some guys, whenever they're putting these cars together and, you know, restoring them or whatever the case, you've got your separate panels back here uh, where your quarter panel comes uh, together with the, uh, the rear panel here right underneath the window. Uh, a lot of times guys will fill those in and make them smooth, which really isn't the correct way of doing it. Uh, this one is not done like that. You can see, you know, obviously, you know, the, uh, uh, the separations in those panels the way they should be. Uh, but you do not see any cracks in those either though, and that's the good thing about it. So you see the separations in the panels, but no cracks in the paint or the clear on that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open our trunk lid up, and we'll take a look inside real quick. So first thing, again, the underside of the trunk lid, same color as the exterior of the car, nice and shiny yellow paint underneath here. You've got your decal here for your jack operating instructions here. You do have a full-size spare in the trunk with a, a spare tire mount. You've got the trunk mat in here also that is matching as well. Um, trunk floor itself is all good. It's all solid underneath there. No patching. And our trunk seal, our weather strip here, nice and soft. The whole way around meets together right here in the center. No cracks or tears in that. So again, you're going to seal up good. As I said before, you've got the little rubber bump stops underneath here that keep it protected down here whenever it's all closed up. Uh, the trunk latch is in good shape. Again, it lo latches, locks, it does all the things that it should. So that's pretty much everything on the inside of our trunk here. Okay, so now that we're on the passenger side, again, there's not a whole lot to go over here. We'll just kind of point out the obvious things as we walk up by. 
So again, our side marker bezels here on the rear, those are in good shape. They're not pitted, nice and shined up there. The actual side marker lens cover is in great shape too, no chips or cracks in that. Again, we've already been over all the bright wheel lip moldings, the rocker trim, all of that stuff. Um, looking at the quarter panel door and front fender to see if it's straight. Again, just like on the other side, it is straight, very straight down the side. So again, no deviation in the elevation from the quarter panel to the door and also from the door to the front fender. They all look good and they are all in a line with one another. Again, as I said on the other side there, as you feel along the bottom of here, you can see that that is nice and smooth. I can feel it super smooth the whole way around there. Again, these are the areas where you would have normally have issues if you're going to have them. And on this car, you do not. Nice and smooth underneath that top. So again, they've got it fitted nice. It's not hiding anything. It's all good underneath there. Uh, the trim, you can see that all the way around there, going all the way up to the front of that. That's all in good shape too. Again, nice and straight. Shined up really good there as well. The Magnum 500 wheels, those are 14 inch front and back. Of course, they've got the beauty rings and the center caps, and those are the SS center caps. As we come up here now, I've already talked about our painted drip rails here. On the other side, we've got the same thing here. As I feel through the, the uh, rain gutter here, I can tell you that that feels nice and smooth too the whole way around and it looks good too up through there. As far as our door goes, our gaps on the back side as well as on the front side, those are very uniform. Again, we've already talked about the elevations and those are good on this car too. So we're going to open up our door real quick, take a quick peek here now on the inside. We've got our same exterior color here coming all the way into the inside of the car the GM emblem, the rubber bump stops, top and bottom. Our seals and weather strip that work their way around the whole door there, those are in great shape too. No, no tears, no cracks or anything like that. Again, all black interior except we've got the house two seat covers in here now. Um, the door jam you seal on this side is very good as well as the threshold plate. Even our seal up along the top here, that is in great shape on this side as well. So again, it's all going to seal up from the elements very nice. The door shuts real good and easy. Good solid shut there too. So it's not going to rattle around on you. As we come up here, of course, you can see the black SS Hockey Strike here all the way up to the front fender. Again, you've got those Camaro script emblems with the SS on the back side of the front fender. You also have the 350 emblem up here on the front fender. And then again, our side marker bezel and lens here are both in excellent shape. All right, we've made it around now to the front side of our 69 Camaro here, SS styled car. So we'll just kind of work our way from top down and then we'll go back underneath the hood then. So as you can see, we've got an SS hood here. You've got the SS grills there up on top. This is an all steel hood. Our gaps the whole way around our hood here are very uniform the whole way around front back and both sides are very nice on this car. As far as our elevations go, fenders to hood, not too bad on this car. Again, you have some adjustability in those hoods with the hinges and the bumps and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you can always fine tune things, but we get them pretty darn close uh, the whole way around. So again, it looks really good. As far as the windshield goes in this car, it's very nice too. There's no cracks or chips in that windshield either. And again, all of your bright work, the trim that goes around there, that's all in really good shape too as well. A little further down here on our header panel here, you can see we've got our Camaro script emblem up here. Down below that now, we've got our grill. Again, this is just your traditional 69 Camaro, not your RS or anything like that. So again, you've got just your blacked out grill here. You've got your traditional sealed beam headlights here. So again, high and lows are all in one unit here. Your headlight bezels here look pretty good. The actual glass lenses on those headlights, those are in great shape too. No chips or cracks in those. The grill itself, excellent shape. It's not broken anywhere, not cracked anywhere. You've got the SS badging right in the center of that too. And to match up with the rear of the car, you've got a nicely chrome front bumper here as well. 
Now down below that front bumper, you've got your lower balance, you've got your parking lights, which your turn signals are housed there too. So those are down there, and the lenses and those are in good shape. They're not cracked either. Uh, and then also right below that, you've got that uh, the flat black, uh, uh, I guess you want to call it like a chin strap or the front air dam there. Uh, so you have that to kind of go along with the rear spoiler and complete that aero package uh, that these cars would have had back in the day. Um, so that's pretty much it for across the front end here in the hood. We're going to open our hood up next here and then we'll take a look at the engine that we have underneath there. So we'll open our hood. Now this hood, the spring on it uh, is not as good as what some of the other ones are. Um, but I'm sure again that could probably be adjusted in there so it pops up a little easier. Otherwise the best thing to do is get it right at the very front there. That's the easiest way to get it once it's unlatched. Um, so underneath the hood here you can see on the bottom side we've got our hood insulation and that's really really nice on this car. It's all tacked up the way it should be with the proper fasteners. There's nothing hanging down. It's not been torn up or anything. It looks all new underneath here. Um, as far as the engine goes now, we have, uh, this is a non-original motor, but it is a date correct 1969 350 cubic inch small block Chevy block here. Now, they've done a couple of things to it to make it look like, um, say, your old 302s that these cars may have come with. They went with the finned aluminum valve covers first off. They also went with the aluminum snowflake intake here with the oil fill tube that's up here. So again, all that would have looked like that 302 back in the day. But it is a 350 motor. It's got a new master cylinder back there for the power brakes. Um, we've also got power steering in here as well. Um, got a stock style radiator with the plastic shroud. And I believe uh, that is a five blade clutch fan on this car to help cool it down. Uh, as far as the rest of the engine goes, we got the uh, chrome air cleaner on top. You've got an Edelbrock single feed four barrel carburetor. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that's a 600 CFM carburetor on this. Um, just uh, your stock, you know, cast uh, water pump on there, cast heads. You've got long tube headers on this too to help it breathe a little better. You do have still the stock style ignition though. So stock distributor, stock style coil, um, and again, uh, aftermarket wires on it. So again, all that's going to kind of remain stock appearing and uh, stock performance basically on that. We do have all new heater lines here it looks like. And those are all in great shape and all hooked up. And they actually have the proper fasteners like they would have come with from the factory on those hoses. As a matter of fact, most of your hoses, even your upper radiator hose, that all has those proper uh, fasteners on them for the hose clamps. Um, now as far as your battery goes, this has the original style uh, Delco battery in it, so it still retains that old school look. Do have a battery disconnect here, that's just something we do on all of our cars. Um, the, uh, the hood braces here, those are painted black and in good shape. Um, so yeah, everything here, like I said, non-original 350 cubic inch, but it is a date correct 1969 block. So that, that does have that going for it. Um, now as far as the rest of the drive line on this car, uh, that motor's made it up to a Muncie 4 speed transmission and then a GM 10 bolt rear end which we'll go over when we do the underside video there with you. Uh, 8.2 inch ring gear. So again the drive line's going to be pretty good for you. Again you're not going to really need a whole lot of uh, you know stout rear end and so forth with a, just a stock 350 motor here. Uh, but yeah, if you ever, you know, uh, upgrade anything there, then of course it's just like anything else, a trickle down effect. You go from one end to the other, and that would be that. So we're going to go ahead and close our hood up now. All right, now that we're inside of our 69 Camaro SS style, we're going to go ahead and check out our interior. Starting out at the, the uh, door panels out there, you can see nice black door panels over there. Got the Camaro uh, emblems or badging on there. The uh, actual armrest that you see there is not in bad shape at all. You can see that there's no cracks or tears in that, so that's all in good shape. Our factory dash, padded dash, it is not cracked anywhere at all. It looks great. 
course, our dash down below here, we've got all factory instrumentation in this car. So you've got your speedometer over on the left side of the column, then you have the fuel gauge over here on the right side of the steering column. Of course, you can see they've tried to match everything up in here, and we've got a factory SS steering wheel here also. So again, it all looks the part. Um, as far as heater controls, factory heater controls in this car, and then they have upgraded the stereo unit in it here. We have an Alpine AM FM CD player in here, so it's going to give you good sound quality for, for a, a head unit in here. Next thing we come into here is our center console. This is a factory four-speed center console. They have the Hurst shifter in here with the Hurst T-handle on it here as well. So all of that matches up. This is a four-speed uh, transmission, so that all matches too. It's got the correct shift pattern on the T-handle, as well as on your indicator down below here on the console. Uh, as far as the rest of our dash across here goes, got the Camaro badging over here too. You've got the grab handle over here too, in case uh, you're the passenger and your driver might be driving a little fast. Got something that you can grab a hold of here to, to slow things down a little bit. Your A-pillar panels here, those are in great shape. The, uh, the actual headliner, it's in really good condition too. It's tied up, it's got the necessary bows in it. Uh, sail panels look great. Even your door panels on the back side here, those all look great. And all the trim looks great on them too. Seat covers, we can see the houndstooth interior in here. The upholstery on it looks great. These things are brand new. Uh, seat covers here and you can tell they just they look great. They match front and back. Uh, the carpeting, that's in great shape too. All black carpeting. I don't see any rips or tears. I don't see any fading either as far as the carpeting goes. Um, so all in all, our interior looks great in this car. Um, the only thing is we don't have seat belts in here. Um, we do have the shoulder harness belts. Those still remain tied up here along the sides. Uh, where they should be up on the headliner. Got all the necessary clips up there to hold those in place like they should be. Um, even our headrests and our front bucket seats, those look great too. There's no cracks or tears in any of those. So seats all look great, the upholstery, the carpeting, all of that looks good in this car. All right, now that we've got our 69 Camaro SS styled up here on the lift here for you, we're going to go through the underside here and show you what we are all looking at here together. So starting up here at the front, we're going to go over the uh, suspension, steering, and braking up here while we're all up here. So suspension, it's all stock factory stuff here. So you've got your stamped lower control arms, your stamped upper A arms here. As far as all the ball joints and all of our uh, suspension here, it looks all good here. Uh, you can tell everything's been maintained and greased up and kept up with over the years. So that all looks good up here. Uh, we do have a front sway bar on this vehicle too here to help tie the two front corners together. That's going to help it in the handling in the corners and so forth. So uh, as far as your um, frame mount bushings go, those all look good as far as the sway bar end lengths and the bushings on those. Those all look in really good condition on this car too. Of course, we can definitely see our front cross member here. Nice and straight on this car. Doesn't look like it's been banged up on anything here. As far as the steering, this is all stock components up here as well. So you've got your center link here. You've got your tie rods here at either side and all of the ball joints on those and the rubber dust boot covers. Those are all intact on this vehicle. Nothing split or cracked. And again, that's just gonna help keep the grease in and keep everything lubricated and keep any dirt or debris out to prevent against any premature wear and tear that you may get on those components. Um, now, as far as brakes go, now again, this car is a power brake car, but it does have four wheel drum brakes on it. So uh, front, back, that's what you've got as far as that goes. Uh, as far as, as we come back here now, we'll look right in the center of the car. We'll look at the drive line. So we've got that non-original motor here. This is a 1969 350 cubic inch small block Chevy block here. We've got that made it to a Muncie four-speed transmission here as we come back. Now it does have the bell housing here and it's got the front cover on it to help protect that flywheel on it as well. As we come back a little further, 
we've got our transmission cross member here too. That's nice and straight the whole way across. And the bushing back here, or the uh, yeah, the urethane bumper that's underneath there, that is in great shape too. So again, that's going to keep that transmission good and sturdy in that in this vehicle. Drive shaft here. Um, this is a balanced drive shaft. You can see it's got the weights on it here, front and back. So that'll take a lot of the vibration out of the drivetrain on this car. And then all the way back here, we've got the GM 10 bolt rear end. Uh, now this is the 8.2 inch ring gear. And this one is just, um, this is a non-posi unit in here. Uh, we've got multi-leaf rear suspension, which would be stock for this vehicle. But they have upgraded the, the uh, shocks on the car uh, to a set of air shocks here. So again, you'll be able to air those up, give it the right stance that you're looking for there. Uh, again, real easy to do on this vehicle. Now as I come back up front here, we'll take a look at the exhaust work on this car. So we do have a set of long tube headers here. You've got dual exhaust, and these are true duals the whole way back here. And then you've got a set of what looks to be uh, like a set of turbo mufflers here. And then of course the tailpipes, and these are correct, where they go up over top of the rear end and then they exit between the leaf spring and the rear quarter panel on the car. So again, all that's correct. We come back up front one more time here to check out a couple of things. Number one, frame rails here, this subframe. That looks all in great shape. You can see how nice and straight those rails are. The body mounts, uh, the bushings on those, those are in good shape too. We always look at those to see if they've been squashed or if they're um, you know, cracked or split or anything like that. And these are still in really good shape on this car, so that all looks good. Uh, of course, our rockers here, you can see all have the, uh, the factory pinch welds on those. And then our floors here. These look to be, I would say, probably the original floors. I don't see any patching. I don't see any holes whatsoever. And you can tell this is, you know, the, the regular floor pants for this car. You can see all the stamping lines and everything um, the whole way back through. So all of your pans look good on this car. Um, the brake lines and the fuel lines, they've all been routed up along the side here. And anywhere that there is a, uh, you know, any kind of a, a bend that's a, a real tight bend, uh, they put that spiral winding around it there that, go, that helps uh, you know, against any kinking of those lines. So again, they've done that. You can see that right here. They have it too on this other side here as well. Uh, our car also has the emergency brake all hooked up here. So of course you've got your front cables, you've got your intermediate, which is this big long one that wraps around here, all of the correct hardware. So your frame hooks and so forth here. And then of course you've got the cables back here to your rear drum brakes as well. A uh, little further back now, we've got the fuel tank. This is a stock tank. Looks to be in really good shape. Uh, the mounting straps are in good shape. The fuel line, you can see it's been routed and looks to be in good shape too. And from what I can see of the trunk floor underneath here, that looks to be good. I don't see any patches. It looks good and solid the whole way around. And that is your stock stamp piece. You can see all the lines in the floor the way that they should be. 